Jesus. Oh, you were waiting for me. You finished talking? Yes, we've come to a decision. My thanks for keeping me to your company. Emmet Selk and Hithledeus have already retired to their rooms. There is room for you too, if you would follow me. Wait! I want to... show you something first. Elpis flowers? Go on. Ah. You're not the only one, Hermes. Others feel sad too. You're not alone. I see Mision has shared much with you. May we talk a moment? I do not think it wrong that we live for the star, that we strive to make it a better place. Carrying out my duties here, there are times when I am plagued by doubt. Do you recall what Hithlidaeus said when we first spoke of my nomination? Death is the privilege of those who have fulfilled their purpose, a choice they embrace of their own free will, and when they depart, it is always beautiful. Perhaps it is. But only for man. Creations that he deems useless are discarded with nary a second thought. Some scarcely born into the world, afforded a handful of breaths before life and potential are abruptly extinguished. We make an effort to spare them the pain, but they sense what awaits. Rage and anguish and cower and fear. And it is not beautiful. Yet no one cares. No one. So fixated are we upon the duty that we do not pause to question the method. Pain and suffering. Confusion and despair writ plain in the eyes of those poor creatures. Yet no one sees. We turn a blind eye and carry on in blissful ignorance. Not amiss. And always, always the blossoms shine pure and white. A contradiction so blatant I could scream, want to scream. How can you all accept this aberration? And I wonder, am I... The aberration for thinking thus. And I am filled with dread. But now I know I'm not alone. Not the only one for whom the flowers weep. I won't ask what you thought as you kneeled beside the Alpis. Or if you only did it at Meteon's insistence. Nevertheless, I thank you. 
to know that you too have experienced suffering is a comfort. So willingly lend an ear to ease my burden. You are a strange one. The stars in the heavens. Know you what they are? Though it is too far to tell, each glittering light could be a world not unlike Aetheris. A world filled with life. So many stars, so many lives. For us, there may be no higher purpose than to live for our world. But what of the other living beings out there? What is it that gives their lives meaning? That drives them day after day after day? To pose that question to our undiscovered cousins, I created beings of dynamis, who can traverse the vast emptiness between the stars, Meteon and her sisters. I, sisters. She has a great many of them. And they have already departed on their journey, traveling to one star and then the next in search of life. As one might expect, exploration on such a grand scale is rife with difficulties, and thus far I've naught to show for it. But I have faith that we will make some manner of discovery ere long. And when we do, I should be glad to share our findings with you, in gratitude for your kindness. It's getting rather late. We had best find our beds. It would not do for both of us to be sleep-deprived on the morrow. Come, Meteon. Let us head back. Forgive me. Please, forgive me. May you and your kin find peace. Wherever your souls may drift in the underworld, may you find tranquil seas. Be not forgotten, in concept endure, to reclaim form and one day live again. Serve not the star, or any purpose save your own. Live again, if that be your desire. If that be your want, we are worthy. But leave your suffering behind. Lay down your burdens, be born anew. Fly high, fly free.
Join the convocation, Hermes. You do not belong here. Leave to replace another. To be replaced. It changes nothing. Tell me, do you think it right that we sacrifice all these lives for the sake of the star? And when the star has reached perfection, what then? If all who are satisfied choose to die, shall we all die in satisfaction? I do not know. Were I to take up the seat of Van Daniel, it would be tantamount to approving my predecessor's death. I do not know if it is right and to be torn by such thoughts. I do not know if I am fit to represent mankind. Hermes! Please, don't be angry. It hurts so. Forgive me. If you would still consider me in spite of everything, I beg some time to gather my thoughts. Meanwhile, Hithlidaeus, I fear I must trouble you to attend to the others. Tis no trouble at all. Take as long as you require. And you, my friend. I pray you find that which you seek. I expect we have some few matters to discuss. Shall we return to the Twelve Wonders for a time? Aye. I present to you Calamelios Zephyros. Here you will find a number of testing facilities, as well as the observation hub of Poiton Oikos. Right then, let's begin by... Hmm. Well, well, an Araeus. How delightful. And what, pray tell, is that? Ah, that's a new species of shark. We approved the concept but a few days ago. Sharks are among the most popular sea creatures. Rare is the day when someone does not submit a new concept. At first, they were largely orthodox. Consideration given to such things as size and environmental impact and then a whimsical someone thought to bestow it with flight. Another, superior intelligence. And then the floodgates burst. Concepts with multiple heads or arms or legs or arms and legs and so on and so forth. It was getting absurd. A part of me wanted to tell them to go away and find something else to create, but again, I couldn't deny their passion. And here we are. That was too close. Are you unharmed? Well now, if it isn't a pair of familiar faces. Banar, that we should meet you here.
As I mentioned earlier, the better part of the convocation holds that when we retire is when we return to the star. Well, she is not among said majority. Even after stepping down, she carries on with her work. Vinar is her name, and she is the previous Azim. It has been a while, Hithlidaeus. You look well. Less so, Emmet Selk. I dare say the lines upon your brow have both deepened and doubled in number. A shame for one so young. You must make an effort to frown less often. Easier said than done, thanks to your unruly successor. How is he, if I may ask? Incorrigible as ever. Rushed headlong into a volcano on the brink of eruption just the other day. I should be glad to share the tale in its entirety later, if you're so inclined. Ha! Oh, you know I am. Now then, you are? Chance come from the future. I do not believe we have ever met, yet I sense my magic upon you. Therefore, if I wove the enchantment, I could only have done so at a later point in time. What manner of magic is this, if I may ask? A traveler's ward, of course. It prevents the corruption of one's ether. Primals, you say? I'm not familiar with such beings, but if they enthrall by warping the balance of ether, then yes, the magic would afford you a measure of protection. I gather from your question that you are not ignorant to its presence. Hold on. From the future? That's absurd. What is it? Are you unable to speak of the matter? The reality to which you must return exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. here will not change your history, but they may yet affect the course of ours. How very exciting! I'm quite fond of delving into the unknown, and there's naught more unknown than the future. Until a moment finally arrives, we cannot know for certain what will come to pass. Regardless of our supposed foreknowledge, so you needn't worry for us. More importantly, that you should go to such great lengths as to travel unto the past bespeaks the gravity of your quest. Will you not reveal it to us? Mayhap we can be of aid to your cause.
If this is true, then you've been keeping quite the secret to yourself. As a representative of the Convocation, I will hear it all. Your identity, purpose, everything. Why don't we move to a place more conducive to calm conversation? I've been working here for some days now at an old friend's behest. If it is agreeable, we may make use of my accommodation at Poiton Oikos. We were meant to meet. I am certain of it. Else I wouldn't have marked you so clearly and sent you unto myself in the past. It's precisely the sort of mischief I would get up to. I'm quite inspired, if I do say so myself. aroma. I feel more relaxed already. Would that I had sweetmeats to offer, but I travel light out of habit. There's plenty of hot water though, so please have as much tea as you like. Now then, will you tell us your tale? Why don't you start from the beginning? Preposterous! Utterly preposterous! While not the words I would have chosen, I too have my doubts. Much of it borders on the incredulous. What of you, Vanar? Not knowing the precise details of the first final days, it is difficult to determine the veracity of the tale. Supposing it is all true, I must ask myself why I would do what I did. Why would I feel I had no recourse but to oppose the Fourteen and create this Hydaelyn? 
Circumstances change, of course. But it would not have been an easy decision regardless. No. There must have been a reason. One compelling enough to force me to take such drastic measures. Then there is the Elpis flower, which I said would serve as a guide. That it's of import to your mission is plain, but your presence here leads me to believe that this place also holds significance. But what could it be? What are we meant to accomplish? Might it not be simply thus? In the future whence he came, the final days could not be averted. Mankind has no choice but to flee the star. By alerting us to that eventuality, perhaps you wish to pave the way for other futures. Theoretically speaking, it is a possibility. Yet if that were my primary objective, I see no reason to guide our friend to Elpis specifically. The capital and Amarot, or even my own home, would be more logical destinations. True, true. I note also that Heidelin did not specify a point in time to which he must return. By this, it may be inferred that it was not critical that we should meet. Alternately, she had reason to believe that our paths would converge, coincidental though it may seem. Hmm. This is quite a puzzle, and we do not have all the pieces. Hardly any, but we do have one immutable fact. If the final days are indeed as described, they will bring death to all that I hold dear. Yet despite being afforded long years of preparation, the only provisions I could make were... for flight. Nay, my first and foremost endeavor would be to find a way to forestall the coming doom. Given that even the Fourteen failed, mayhap you deemed it impossible. Nothing is impossible. This I have always believed. And if Heidelin is indeed me, she would believe the same. Listen to yourself. Are you seriously entertaining the notion that you are a messianic figure in some far-fetched tale? Well, I will not. I refuse to accept that our world could be undone by some unforeseen calamity. I also take offense to my portrayal as a megalomaniacal madman. To sacrifice oneself for the star is a noble act, and I would hold those who gave themselves to this zodiac in the highest esteem. Yet, you claim I recreated Amarot and populated it with phantoms of our people? A bizarre indulgence that would be insulting to their memory. Worse still, I even invited you there. Literally invited my own downfall. Why would I do something so idiotic and inexplicable? Now, I will allow that the hypothetical task of restoring our world would be daunting in the extreme. The thought of having to bear such a burden for a thousand, thousand lives horrifies me. But I would never forsake my duty. I would never forsake my brethren. You do not know me. I've had my fill of your fiction. I will return to my duty, and you will not bother me again.
Emmett Selk. Wait. You've seen much of Elpis already. If you have any observations to share, I should like to hear them. Hermes and his creation Meteon, you say? If Dynamis is the self-same energy as Akasha, as it likely seems, then those two may well be at the center of the calamity to come. This warrants further investigation. With that settled, it is time for action. The missing pieces of the puzzle are here, I'm certain of it. And when you find them, the picture my future self has painted will be complete, and you will have your answer. Now suffice it to say, I will aid you in your quest. is the man Azam described to me. We've not seen the last of him. breeze and a breathtaking view. What is it like in the future? Is the world still a beautiful place? Places rife with danger. Those of an altogether different, but no less powerful sort of appeal. While we wait, will you not tell me about your adventures? Well, not the portentous events which led you here, but the simple delights all your own. By learning about the future world, I may gain insight into future me's plans. But more than that, I have an interest simply as a fellow traveller. Short of going somewhere oneself, there's naught more stirring than hearing another's account. Incredible. <laughs> Would that I could have been there to see it. <sighs> Yours is a harsh and unforgiving world. Yet in spite of this, your brethren hold fast to their virtue. To know that the light of mankind's potential still shines, even in that faraway place, it gives me heart. Thank you for regaling me with your tales. I will treasure every word.
As you know, I was once a scholar. And among other things, I sought to understand the workings of the world. What exactly is ether? How formed the laws of nature? When sprung mankind? Riddles and mysteries beyond counting. Over the years, I have managed to find answers to some few of them. Yet rather than attain a sense of mastery, the more I understood, the more I came to hold the world and its miracles in awe. We too are miracles, each and every one of us, born of the warm breath of life that traverses the heavens, swirling through eternity. When I fully grasped the improbability of our existence, nothing felt impossible anymore. If it could be imagined, it could be done. A passion swelled within me. An epiphany dispelling all preconceptions of what was natural and true. And a presence without. Immense, yet intimate. Fate, perhaps, holding us in its tender embrace. As reassuring as it was intimidating, how keenly aware I became of creation's fragility, built as it is upon precarious happenstance. I was overcome with an irrepressible urge to know the world more intimately, to hear its voice, feel its breath. I ventured forth on a journey that very day, so very long ago now. Freed from presumption and prejudice, I saw the world through a newborn's eyes. Everything fresh and new, and so, so beautiful. Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in, the heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all a people, beacons of light and life, laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning, and my purpose, my love. And so long as they need help, I cannot return to the star. Perhaps my future self is still waiting for it. A moment she can let go and walk unto the end. Safe in the knowledge that man will find his own way. You, who are our future, tell me this and tell me true. Has your journey been good? Has it been worthwhile? Pray forgive my lateness. My observation subject was rather irritable, and it took a while to settle it down. No need to apologize. Your work takes precedence. Besides, we had a pleasant conversation in the meantime. You're too kind. Now then, I'm told you wished to ask me some questions. Indeed. I have an interest in one of Hermes's creations. Meteon. You witnessed a host of them take flight, yes? Oh, that! Yes, yes, I did. It was in the dark of the morn. I'd left the Thalassi after nocturnal observation. As I walked along, I spied a bright light climbing high into the southeastern skies. Then, in an instant, it was gone. Like a shooting star, only... Rising rather than falling. But then another shot up. Then another. And another. 
Intrigued, I made my way to the edge to investigate. And who should I spy on an isle to the south? But Hermes and Meteon, the, the Matea, rather. There were lots of them, and I realized they must be the shooting stars that I'd seen. A dazzling spectacle indeed. Have you spoken with Hermes about this? Oh, yes. The sight left such an impression on me that I approached him about his mystery project the very next day. Alas, he said that he couldn't reveal anything just yet, that he needed to conduct further tests. <laughs> it shouldn't be long now, though. He often returns to that isle, and I have a feeling he's nearing a breakthrough. Splendid. We are likewise eager for the details. Well, that is all we wish to ask. Thank you for taking the time to indulge our curiosity. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to speak with other inquisitive souls. Oh, and will you be descending now? If so, I shall link the doors for you. Please. <laughs>